Hi everyone! In today's video I'll be sharing with you how I put together these faux leather snowman earrings by using iron-on vinyl. Yes, you can iron on to your faux leather. So that's really exciting because it opens up so many design opportunities and there are so many great iron-on materials, whether it's plain vinyl, whether it's foil, or even using some of the great print iron-on materials that are out there. So stay tuned and I'll show you how to put them together. Okay, so let's start by taking a look at the files I'm using. I found these free snowman faces um, on this website here. I'll link to that from my blog page. For those of you new to my channel, if you click on the arrow next to the title of the video and you get into the video description, I'll have the link to my blog page. And that's where I link to all of the materials that I use for each project. So you'll be able to see what those are and it'll help you if you're shopping for any of those materials. Okay, I also downloaded this. You've probably, if you've seen my other videos, I've made a lot of uh, different earrings from this different bundle. This was a really expensive bundle on Etsy. It was three bucks. I'll link to that too. Um, I've, you've seen me do the bars. You've seen me do the fringe. Um, I've done these triple stacks. Um, I don't think this is the one I use for my feather uh, blog post. I think I used a different one. And then there's a backing card. So this is a great bundle. Today we're going to use just a basic teardrop. I think I'll probably use, mm, I'm probably going to use this one. Because I've been doing a lot of wider ones. I might try to do a little bit of narrow ones um, today. All right, so we're going to click into design space and the first thing we need to do is to get these images into our space. I've already uploaded these. If you don't know how to do that, I do have a video on how to upload images into Design Space. You, here you can see I uploaded quite a few. This is the one I'm actually going to use right here. So I will insert it. A lot of times files come in pretty big. I like to be able to see everything. So I'm going to take the height on this one down to four. We won't leave it at four, but I just want to be able to see it. Um, oops, I just want to be able to see it above the line. Okay, then I also need to insert the image again. So I'm going to come over here on the left and I need to get my earring teardrop in. So I'm going to come down and I said I was going to use this one that's a little bit more narrow. All right, then I like to check the height that it came in at. This is coming in at 2.539. That's a really good size for a teardrop earring, so I don't even need to modify that. So really, if I know I'm gonna keep my earring size the same, it's really figuring out how I need to modify my snowman face to fit onto my earring. So the first thing I wanna do is just stack them on top of each other so that I can see you know, what that's gonna look like and I find two things happen. First, I wanna go ahead and change the color of my earring. I'm gonna change it to white since he is a snowman. And then second, uh, when I tried to move him behind, he actually is sitting behind my earring instead of front, in front of it. So as long as that image is highlighted, I can right click on it and I can send it to the front. And now when I move it over, it will be on top of the white, not below it. So I'm going to use this uh, icon in the lower right hand corner to just, I'm pulling it up, pulling it towards the center. If you wanted, you could also come up here and just put a different number into the height. Uh, but I like to do this because then I can just be playing with it while I'm looking at the face. And this actually looks like a really good fit for my snowman face. Now there is something I need to do because when I look at this snowman face, it's all grouped in here. But if I were to go ahead and click on the makeup button right now, you can see here on the black mat that they're organizing my vinyl cutouts in a really efficient way to make the most out of the vinyl, but it's not putting it in the order. It means I'd be hand placing each of these dots onto my snowman. Okay, so we've got just a little bit of work to do on our snowman face. So I'm just going to move his face off of my earring and work on him over to the side. And what I need to do once I've highlighted the snowman face is I need to ungroup it. And then I just need to get the nose out of there. 
And the reason is I am going to attach these elements together, but I'm not attaching the nose because he is a different color. So I'm just clicking around that face and then I'm coming to the bottom and I'm just clicking on the attach. And so now if we were to make it, you can see the face is all together. And so you're not going to need to be placing each of those dots. All right, so this is now grouped together and it's attached. All right, so let's get the earring back over here and let's get our nose back over here. And I think we're ready to go. So now we just need to make sure we have enough copies of everything that we're getting ready to do. So I know for my earring, I need to duplicate that. Oops. I know for my nose, I need to duplicate that. And then I need to duplicate my face. There is one more thing that we need to do, or we don't need to do, it's kind of really a matter of preference, but we've got these noses. And um, I, I think what I would like, and actually I think we do need to do it on the faces too, because the faces aren't identical. I'm trying to move these two faces apart from each other. Um, we need to flip so that the, I actually, I think, oh no, because the eyes, we would want the eyes to look the other way too. So on one earring, it will look like this, and we want on the other earring, we want it to be the reverse of that. And so we're gonna highlight this one, and we're just going to come up here and see this flip button. We can click on that, and then we're gonna say flip horizontal, and that's just gonna turn, see how his eyes are now switched the other way. And then I'm gonna highlight this carrot, and I'm gonna come over here, and I'm going to, click flip horizontal on the carrot as well. And then that way we'll be able to have one earring of a snowman facing each way. All right, so we're ready to make our project. I'm just gonna click on the make a button. That's gonna bring my mats back up. My first mat to cut will be my white mat. I have my faux leather already on my Cricut mat here. I can use a green since it's faux leather. I can use the green mat. I did put my plastic cover for my Cricut mat. Those of you who have seen my videos, I started it at about three inches down and I like to do that because I don't like to pre-cut my leather and that lets me not, you know, have the stick to the mat that um, isn't being used. Now, the other thing I need to do is make sure that my setting is right. I need to be on custom. And then I also need to make sure after I push continue here, that's gonna be my chance to select my fabric. And remember, this is my fabric that I bought on Etsy. It's not a Cricut fabric. And so I'm going to need to set it to that shimmer leather. That's pretty much what I always use when I'm not using um, a Cricut material. I have it saved as a favorite, but just for those of you who are new, I want to make sure you see, you just browse all materials and you scroll down and there's so many different Cricut materials. Um, I'm looking for the brown bar because that's where all the leather stuff is. This would be what I'd use if it was a Cricut uh, material. I'm using shimmer leather because I use that for all other, and this is faux leather. Um, and that's where we're able to cut this with our regular blade. So now that I have it selected, I just can come down here and tap that done button. And it's just reminding me, you know, that it is okay to have my fine point blade in and that now I'm ready to load my mat, which you can see here because I'm getting my blinking button. And these teardrops always just cut out super easy without any problems. You can see here how they really just, this leather just pulls right off. I am always careful in case there is a spot that it sticks. You wouldn't want to pull or rip the leather, but um, I, typically you can use almost any faux leather here without having any cut issues, just on your basic teardrop without intricate cuts. Okay, so back on our mat, we need to click on the black max. That's what we're cutting next. And again, this shows you, these are the faces that we're cutting out. I like to look at the mat because it does show me that it's taking about two inches. So I need to have about a two by three inch piece. I don't think I'm gonna cut mine. I think I'll just unroll it a little bit, but you do wanna look to see how much space 
you're gonna need a vinyl. And then the other thing we need to look at over here is on the mirror setting, because we do need to be on mirror anytime we're doing iron on as a matter of practice, everything is in reverse. And if I click on the continue button, I will also need to set my material that I'm using for this part of the project. So I will need to set my material and I'm just going to do the browse all materials again. And then I'm gonna look for the iron on section. Now I always do this, there is a setting over on your Cricut for iron on, but look at all these different iron ons. I like to just come here because then I can set it for whichever kind of iron on I'm using. This is actually the everyday iron on. That's what this is. This is my black everyday iron on from Cricut. And so that's why I'm clicking on that one. All of a sudden I lost my focus. Um, and then now that I've done that, I can go ahead and send it to the Cricut cutter. Okay, when you are putting your iron on onto your mat, you want the shiny side to face down. See, there's always a shiny side and a duller side. The dull side should be facing up. Just get that pressed down really nice. So I do want to take just a minute to say thanks for stopping by my channel today. If you're new, welcome. I've had so much fun uh, hearing from some new people who are just starting out with their Cricut machine, uh, just starting to do some of the DIY jewelry, and that's been really fun to hear from some of you. Uh, if you find anything helpful today in the video, I'd really like it if you take just a minute to, to click that like button. And if you think that this kind of video is right for you, anything from uh, holiday planning, DIY party planning, and DIY jewelry, go ahead and tap subscribe. And if you tap that bell button, then you'll get notifications anytime I post something new. All right, so let's take a look. Let's take pull this off and see how we do. So I'm gonna pull this off, and then what I like to do is just to cut the portion where I have my cuts. So, that's what I'm doing now. It's kind of hard to say. You definitely couldn't see it because it's kind of hard even for me to see. But this is where my two smiley faces are because the next thing that I need to do is I need to weed this. Okay, so I usually will start to try to pull back that vinyl from a corner. And once I kind of get that started, I do like to usually go ahead and put it down on a mat. So pressing it down on my mat. This is the weeding tool. For those of you new to Cricut, weeding is when you are pulling off all the parts of the vinyl that you're not planning to use. And you do need to go kind of slowly, like a good example would be some of these circles could get caught up and not stick and you wouldn't wanna lose those. So I try to just watch as I'm pulling to make sure everything is looking right and that all the components seem to be there that are supposed to be there. And it is that easy. We now have our faces. Um, I will actually cut these into two because we know these go on two different earrings. So I'm just going to cut that right in the middle. You can see I've got my earrings here. You can see how they're gonna fit right there on my earrings, right? Kind of without the carrot anyway. And then now the next step that we have is we need to cut out our carrot. All right, so now we need to click on our orange mat. We need the mirror on. So we, the iron on is still the right setting, but I do need to change this to be mirrored. So I can turn that on right here, turn that mirror on and then can just go ahead and click that done and we are ready. I've got my paper already loaded or my vinyl already loaded as usual, glossy side down. All right, I don't really even think I need my weeding tool uh, for this, I might, but I have a feeling it's just these two carrots, this will just pull right off. And then I'll need to do the same thing. I do think on, in this case, I will Turn this down just a tad bit and then cut it right down the middle. 
what I'm gonna do, you don't need to do this because you could just iron this in two different steps. But what I think I've decided to do, or what I have decided to do, is I am just gonna cut these down and I am going to stick them on top of the other transfer because I can do that without really having any kind of overlap. So for example, this nose goes right in here. So I can actually fit it right in here like that. That's gonna let me do that iron on the earring at the same time. It also really lets me see how it's looking. Like I think that looks a little high, so I'm gonna see if I can peel that off a little. Turn it back around. Should be just kind of just above the mouth. The carrot just kind of hitting the end. Like that I think is really where I want that. And now when I go to iron that on, I can just do that all as one. So I just need to also do that for the other one. To figure out which carrot went with which, I just had to look at the picture of the original to see what nose went with what carrot. And there we go for that one. All right, so I think we're set. Let's talk about how to get these ironed on with the easy press. Okay, so I always start with the heat guide. Of course, something came with my Cricut, but I like this. I just go on it usually on my cell phone. I'm doing it on my iPad. So the first thing you do is you say, okay, here's what I'm using. I've got the easy press too. And then you say the heat transfer material that I'm using is, and I'm doing everyday iron on. So this first one is the kind of material. Then you tell it what material you're putting it on and I'm putting it on faux leather. And then you say, are you using a Cricut Easy Press mat? Which I am, I love the Cricut Easy Press mat. That is a really good investment if there's something kind of that you wanna put on your Christmas list. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. So I'm using a Cricut mat. You don't have to have a Cricut Easy Press mat. You could use a towel. And then um, you just click apply. And then this gives you really good information because it says, okay, you need to set this to 280 degrees Fahrenheit. So while we talk, why don't I go ahead and start First that. I turn it on, and then I need the temperature to go up to 280 degrees. And then I say, okay, set that. And now it's warming up and it's orange, and it will beep to let me know, and this will turn green when it's ready. It gets hot pretty fast. Let's just watch it for just a second. So it's moving up about five degrees almost every second or so. So the other thing that this tells me is the amount of pressure I need to give when I'm applying the transfer. Uh, sometimes, like even though this says light pressure, I probably won't really put pressure. I'll just set the easy press right on top of it. Um, and then the other thing it tells me is when to peel the transfer off. Sometimes you need to wait till it cools before you peel the transfer off. And sometimes you do it while it's warm. And this is saying that you do it while it's warm. So I love this heat guide. It's just super helpful. And it always gives me a lot of confidence that I'm doing the okay, right thing. Okay, so my green light is on. My Cricut e Easy Press is ready. I'm just putting it down on my mat for a few seconds just to warm it up. I don't always do that. It, it's uh, for this leather. It just really doesn't take a whole lot to get this iron on to stay to it. And then I'm just gonna get my snowman set like so. And then I'm going to cover it with a piece of parchment paper and then put my easy press down and push the green button. Now, what you can see is the timer is going because it says it's a 30 second, 30 second heat. I was trying to pull up my heat guide again. I thought it said 30 seconds. I just like to compare, uh, but it looks like that is so. And it's done back on here and let's see what we've got now it does say that it's a warm peel to take the heat transfer off 
And don't forget, you've got a different one for your nose. Got to get that one off too. Oh my gosh, they're just so darling. <laughs> I love it. Okay. And I've got to get my carrot off. They're kind of hot. you got to be careful that the heat transfer paper is hot. And that's it. Your earrings are ready. If you're interested in how to put the earring components on, stay tuned. I'll talk through that. Otherwise, if you already know how to do that part, that's it. Thanks a lot for joining today. Okay, for those of you sticking around, uh, this is super easy. It won't take us very long. First, let me just show you the tools I'm using here. I've got my pliers and I've got this jump ring tool. Uh, these are both linked up again under, if you click on the arrow next to the title of the video and my uh, description opens up, there'll be a click to my blog post. I have a kit that I bought. It includes both of these. It has all of your hooks and jump rings of all kinds of different colors. And it even comes with quite a bit of faux leather. I think white is even a color in there. I'm not positive about that, but I think so. Pretty sure I used that already first. Um, so you grab a jump ring with your pliers. A jump ring pretty much has an opening at the top. And then you use this other tool and you slip your jump ring into the opening and you just pull back. You're not pulling side to side, that's super important. You don't wanna open it side to side or you're not gonna be able to close it very well and you'll get a bend in your material. It just won't look very good. Um, your metal won't look very good when you close it back up. So what I did is I put one of my jump rings onto a hook and then I need to grab my other jump ring and I'm going to put it onto a hook using the same method, pushing that back, throw the jump, throw the hook in, and then I just need to close that back up. So I like to do that first. Oop, that is not good because when I closed it back up, it's not meeting, it's not flush, and you really need it to be. You don't wanna mess around with your jump, oh, there we go, I got it. You need your jump rings to be closed the right way or they won't hold your earrings. Okay, so then the last step is to take another jump ring. Again, for every earring I do, I need two jump rings and a hook. So I just open up this jump ring. I put my snowman earring on it like that. And then I just need to close that. Oh, I almost forgot the hook. Before I close it up, I've got to put the hook on. You want to make sure if you were to put it like that, it would hang backwards. So make sure that when you put the hook on, it's facing to the back. I'm not gonna lie and say that I've never done that because I have done that. Um, well, I don't do it very much anymore because I've made that mistake a few times. All right, and then the last one, I just need to open this up, put my snowman on, grab my hook, make sure it's facing to the back, put it on, and then close that up. There we go. They are just so cute. I think that our snowman earrings turned out so cute. I just love the look when we put vinyl iron on onto our faux leather earrings. Uh, it's fun to use just plain everyday iron on like this. I've used foil. You can use glitter, all different kinds of iron on in it. And it really just opens up the range of designs you can use when you're making your faux leather earrings. So hopefully today what you saw was just how easy it is to use iron on with your faux leather earrings, especially with the Hallmark Cricut Easy Press. Again, I'll link below to my blog where I link up all these materials and equipment so you can easily check them out. Thanks so much.